Welcome, dear listeners, to another exciting journey through the world of books. Get ready to be spellbound as we dive into the captivating pages of the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. If my videos bring a smile to your face or provide valuable insights, show some love by liking and following my channel. And if you want to take it a step further, leave a comment sharing your favorite part or any suggestions you may have. Volume 1 The volume begins with the conception of Tristram Shandy. His mother and father are partaking in sexual intercourse when his mother asks if there is a problem with the cuckoo clock. From here, Tristram criticizes his mother's ill-timed question and wonders the effect it had on his father's performance. Tristram credits his uncle Toby for the anecdote, whereon Tristram quotes a conversation between Toby and his father that claims Tristram's problems started nine months before he ever came into the world. The narrator, Tristram Shandy, is prone to moving away from the facts of the subject of which he is writing and stating his own opinions. In the first volume, Tristram talks about how he does not care and how he is going to give his opinions and say what he likes. Often, these opinions take the form of anecdotes. The next tale is about the midwife his mother wants at his birth. The midwife lives nearby Tristram's village, and Tristram explains how the parson and his wife took pity on the widowed midwife and helped finance her license. Her license. After another digression, Tristram introduces Yorick, the parson. He compares Yorick to his namesake in Hamlet and the main character in Don Quixote. Yorick is a kindly and witty man, but his straightforward talking means he is misunderstood and generally unpopular. The villagers borrow his horses to ride the seven miles to the doctors, leaving him with nothing but an old slow horse. Consequently, the villagers presume he is helping the midwife so they do not have to borrow his horses and he can start riding his faster, stronger steeds. However, the vicar proves them wrong by keeping to his old horse. At the end of the anecdote, Yorick dies with his faithful friend Eugenius by his side. Tristram continues by detailing arguments and disagreements between his father and mother, firstly on the laws of their marriage, secondly on how and where his mother can give birth, and thirdly the name they want to give the child. Tristram's father alludes to many strange philosophical ideas to argue his case, but his mother has a legal document to back herself. Tristram takes the side of his father and goes into another digression about his women readers and then how his digressions are actually progressions. In between, he starts the story of his uncle Toby. Tristram's father and his uncle are close brothers, but unfortunately, Toby has a sensitive disposition due to a stone hitting him in the groin when he was a captain in the British Army. While Tristram's father is fond of telling everyone about his sister's affair with a coachman, Uncle Toby often has to take Tristram's father aside and, with tears in his eyes, beg him to stop for the sake of the family. Tristram promises to continue with his uncle's story in the next volume. Volume 2 Tristram makes good with his promise, continuing with the theme of his uncle Toby. He explains that his father gave Toby a room in his house while he recovered from his groin injury. Tristram's father brought many friends and acquaintances to the house to inquire about the battle and Toby's injury. Unfortunately, the battle was so complex that Toby finds it impossible to recount his tale accurately. In the end, he decides that knowing where and how he became injured is an important part of his recovery. He buys a map and uses it to plan out all his old battles. Toby becomes so obsessed that he reads countless books, studying such facts as the projectile of a cannonball. Toby goes about his new hobby horse with little thought to his injury, but feeling more alive, he suddenly decides he has to get better. After passively taking the doctor's word for so long, Toby now, to the doctor's shock, 
virtually commands the doctor to cure his groin. After only a period of six weeks, Toby is better. At this point, Toby's servant, Trim, joins the story. Toby and Trim are actually great friends, and Trim, seeing his friend so full of life again, seeing his friend so full of life again, suggests they move to the country and to a space where they can recreate battle scenes. Toby excitedly agrees and states his intention of writing a history book. Tristram then returns to a scene from the previous volume where Toby and his father wait for Tristram's birth. The servant Susanna has fetched the midwife and now Tristram's father orders his other servant Obadiah to fetch Dr. Slop. In Obadiah's absence, Tristram's father becomes annoyed at Toby's ignorance of women and is just about to put him right when the doctor arrives. Unfortunately, Dr. Slop has no medicine bag and Obadiah has to go back to get the bag. At this point, the men have an argument about science and Tristram's father insults Uncle Toby. However, they soon make up in Toby to show he feels no hard feelings continues with what caused the argument in the first place. Toby shows his appreciation for the engineer. Stevinus and Trim brings in a copy of Stevinus's book. When Trim shakes the book, a copy of a sermon falls out, which Toby and Tristram's father encourage Trim to read aloud. Trim reads the sermon eloquently, though Dr. Slop, a Protestant, shows offense at some of the details. Abladiah returns with the medicine bag just as the sermon finishes. This prompts the men to talk about childbirth and the problems that can occur. Tristram's father worries his wife's pelvis will crush his son's head, and he explains he once suggested a cesarean. However, his wife went white at such a prospect, so she is having a normal birth. Dr. Slop assures the company that medicine has made great advances, particularly in delivering babies. Volume 3 His story continues in the parlor where the gentlemen chat. Dr. Slop is angry with Obadiah, who has tied two tight knots in the doctor's medicine bag in order to carry it safely back. The doctor unties the knots with a knife, but cuts his thumb in the process. Tristram then proceeds with the doctor's lengthy abuse of Obadiah. Once the bag is open, Susanna arrives to request the doctor's assistance upstairs. The request offends the doctor who feels the midwife should come to him. Just before he takes his leave, the doctor tests his forceps on Toby's hand and takes off to buy skin and takes off to buy skin. Tristram's father is aghast wondering aloud what damage that will be done to his son. Soon afterwards, the doctor leaves with Susanna and almost immediately Tristram's father and Toby fall asleep. At this point, Tristram takes time out from the scene to write his preface. In his preface, he writes a discourse on wit and judgment. Tristram's father wakes to the sound of Trim oiling the door hinges of the parlor. The men comment on the sound coming from the kitchen, and Trim tells them that the doctor is in there creating a bridge. Tordy presumes that the doctor is making a drawbridge for his battle scene and announces his great thanks. From here, Tristram talks about the real drawbridge that his uncle actually builds at his country house. Back in the parlor, Trim says the bridge is for Tristram's nose, which Dr. Slop has damaged with his forceps. Tristram's father cannot believe his bad luck. He places great importance on noses and attributes his family problems to their traditionally small nose. The reader hears his father's well, read opinion on the subject. At the end of the volume, Tristram promises to tell the reader one of No Scholar Slockenbergai's tales. Volume 4 The fourth volume begins with Slockenbergai's story. It tells the account of a man with a big nose who travels to Strasbourg for a nose convention. The man's nose and his polite manner shock the residents of the city, and a discussion of the nose's virtue leads to a debate between the Catholic and Protestant churches. 
This tale has little significance on the remainder of the volume as Tristram returns to his father in the parlor. His father decides that because of the misfortune of Tristram's nose, he must give the child a strong name, finally deciding upon Trismegistus. Following a discussion with Toby on the virtues of the name, Susanna interrupts to say the child has gone black in the face and the curator needs to baptize the child before its death. Tristram's shocked father gives Susanna the name Trismegistus and she rushes back upstairs, giving the curator a different name that makes no sense. They decide that Tristram's father must have meant Tristram. It soon becomes apparent the child will live, and upon hearing the name now given to his child, Tristram's father is most upset. He decides to call for Yorick to see if they can change the name. Yorick tells Tristram's father that he does not have the authority to change the name, and they must go and see the church lawyer, Didui. Tristram's father, Eugenius, Yorick, and Toby all head off to see him. During their discussion, Yorick drops a hot chestnut into the writer Futatoris's lap, burning his groin. Futatoris is unhappy with the incident and thinks Yorick did it on purpose. This incident dies down quickly, and from the resulting discussion, Didwis decides they cannot change Tristram's name. His father's spirits lift when he discovers his aunt Dinah has left him a large sum of money. He wonders whether to use the money to fund a trip for his other son, Bobby, or to fix the Shandy's estate. Unfortunately, he then receives news that Bobby is dead. Tristram ends the volume teasing the reader of what he or she can expect in later volumes. Volume 5 After a brief digression on Whiskers, Tristram looks at the reactions to his brother's death. Tristram's father, as usual, takes it philosophically, but Suzanne runs to the kitchen most upset. A moment later, Tristram's mother overhears the word wife when she walks past the parlor door. She presumes that Toby and Tristram's father are talking about her, and she stays by the door to listen. Tristram promises to come back to this scene before moving to the kitchen. In the kitchen, Suzanne relays the news about Bobby's death to Trim, Obadiah, the cook, and Jonathan, the coachman. Trim is not overly upset, but seeing Suzanne's feelings, he begins to feel sorry. At this point, as Tristram states, Trim goes on a harangue about Bobby's death. In the middle of the speech, Tristram returns to his mother, who heard nothing that she expected, and now finds herself listening to her husband talking about Socrates. Tristram's father decides to concentrate on his newborn son and begins writing a book on how to educate him. Tristram remarks that his father spent so much time on the book that he neglected the first few years of Tristram's life. At the age of five, Tristram is in his bedroom with Susanna, sitting under a sash window. Unfortunately, the window falls and circumcises him. Susanna runs from the incident, thinking she was to blame, taking refuge with Trim. Trim tells her it was not her fault, as he had taken the lead from the window to use for Toby's fortification. He goes as far to say that himself and Toby are nothing but murderers. However. Tristram claims he felt little pain, and when his father sees that he is fine, he gives orders to get Dr. Slop and goes back downstairs. In the presence of Trim, Tobai and Yorick, the father reads from his book. Dr. Slop joins them after he has finished with Tristram and Tristram's father reads some more. Volume 6 Dr. Slop and Susanna attend to Tristram's wound. The two of them do not get on, and fighting and bickering breaks out between them. Meanwhile, Tristram's father is discussing with Toby how to educate his son. Toby mentions Lefevre's son would make a good tutor to Tristram. Toby is Lefevre's guardian, and Lefevre is currently making his way back from the war to Shandy House. The mention of Lefevre leads Tristram into a story about how Toby became the boy's guardian. 
Tristram describes how Lefevre's father took ill in the village inn. Toby gets word of him, and hearing he is a war casualty and a good man, sends Trim to find out more. Trim comes back with the news that the man is dying and his son cries at his bedside. Toby refuses to accept the man will die and tries to help him recover. Unfortunately, nothing can be done for him, so the boy moves in with Tobu, who puts him through school. Tristram's father thinks Lefevre will make a great teacher for his son. Later on, in bed with his wife, he holds what he calls his beds of justice. The topic is whether Tristram should wear breeches to make him seem more manly. But despite his efforts to start an argument, his wife agrees to everything. After a few more digressions, Tristram takes up a new topic in the book. He starts telling the reader about his uncle's fortifications on his bowling green and follows Toby and Trim's love for recreating the battle scenes, including the building of towns and churches. To Toby's horror, the war ends, and so does his hobby. Tristram's father and Yorick question why Toby is so upset and that war is actually a bad thing. In reply, Toby enters into a dialect on the virtues of war that impresses Tristram's father so much he writes it down. Without his hobby, Toby becomes bored. However, this boredom lifts when he meets Widow Wadham. Susanna surprises everyone when she returns with news of the couple's forthcoming marriage. Tristram ends the volume, illustrating his plot digression with lines. He tells the reader he will write the next volume in a completely straight line. Volume 7 The volume begins with Tristram lamenting his ill health, worrying that there is a possibility he will not be able to finish his book. Upon consultation with Eugenius, he decides he can run away from death by traveling abroad. Immediately after making the decision, he travels to the port in Dover. Tristram's first port of call is Calais. He writes a report on the history of the town and then moves on to Boulogne. He then sets off to Paris, and via Montreal and Abbeville, he arrives there by stagecoach. Tristram expects much from Paris, but immediately complains that the streets are ugly and the place smells. He moves to Lyon in order to run further away from death. In between Lyon and Paris, Tristram recounts a tale of a previous trip to France with his father, Uncle Toby, and Trim. In Lyon, he encounters a few problems. First, he sells his damaged carriage and then makes friends with an ass. He plans to make his next trip by boat to Avignon, but a man forces him to pay money for a carriage, saying he has a legal obligation to pay. After a disagreement, Tristram sees no way out and pays the money. Unfortunately, as he is about to leave on his new journey, he realizes he has forgotten his travel notes. Eventually, he finds them all crumpled up under a lady's hat. In the south of France, Tristram feels confident he has outrun death and travels happily around the region on a mule. By the end of the volume, he promises to go back to the story about his uncle Tobai and the widow Wadham. Volume 8 Volume 8 continues with the tale of Toby and widow Wadham. Tristram is still wandering south of France on his mule, but Tristram continues the story because he feels that not to tell the story would be a disservice to his uncle and the reader. As Tristram hinted in the previous volume, Toby did not realize his love for the widow until Susanna points out to Toby that he loves the widow. In fact, Toby is the last to know of his feelings. Tristram starts from the very beginning of the affair when Toby and Trim move to the country. When they initially arrive, the house is not ready, so Toby moves in with the widow for a few days. The widow quickly falls in love with Toby but he is too involved with reenacting battles to take any notice. However, the widow does not give up and over many years, she works her way into Toby's century. When the war is over, rendering Toby's hobby useless, he finally can give his attention to falling in love. The day it happens, 
Trim is telling Toby a story about the king of Bohemia. However, Toby interrupts his story and ruins his train of thought so much that Trim never gets to tell the tale. Instead, Trim describes his knee injury and the nurse that gave back his health. Trim is explaining he fell in love with the nurse when Widow Wadham walks onto the scene. She tells Toby she has something in her eye. As Toby looks in vain, he suddenly notices her eyes are beautiful. Toby tells Trim he has fallen in love, and they concoct an approach to the widow akin to a battle maneuver. The story gets to Tristram's father and mother, who are both mildly amused. Tristram's father knows his brother does not have much knowledge of women. So Tristram's father writes Toby a letter explaining how to deal with the opposite sex. Tristram's father and mother both go to Toby's house to deliver the letter just as he about to see the widow and declare his love. Volume 9 The volume continues with Toby and Trim making their way to Widow Wadham's front door with Tristram's mother and father watching on from afar. Tristram's mother and father... Tristram's mother and father talk about her idea of spying on events through the keyhole. Tristram's father is not completely opposed to the idea, but his philosophizing on the subject makes his wife feel like a criminal. Meanwhile, on the steps of the widow's house, Trim talks about his brother Tom's misfortune with his Jewish wife. Inquisitors took in his brother due to a problem about his wife, and now Trim presumes his brother is dead. Because of this event, Trim is against marriage. Tristram then makes a digression in the story, but returns to explain his uncle's hesitation upon entering the house. Toby tells Trim to wait while he makes up his mind. Behind the door, Bridget waits for the knock and widow. Bridget waits for the knock and widow. Wadham spies on the two men through a window. Finally. Trim knocks on the door, and the two men enter. Tristram follows this event with two blank chapters. In the house, Trim goes to talk with Bridget, and Toby follows Widow Wadham. At this point, the two men's injuries become part of the conversation. Widow Wadham, worried about the extent of Toby's groin injury, wants to see exactly where he was injured. Toby misunderstands and orders Trim to get the battle map so he can point out the exact position. When he returns with the map, Toby places her finger on the exact position in the moor. Meanwhile, Bridget tells Trim that she has heard Toby is impotent, and Trim vehemently denies the rumors. The two relationships blossom, and while Trim romances Bridget, Toby asks Widow Wadham to marry him.